I am using the Stillman Burn Zeta Series sketchbook in the 9 by 12 size for this study of Edward Pothaste. I have primed the right page with Zinser and Zinser by Bullseye Primer and some blue acrylic paint. Pretty dark. I don't usually tone this dark, but it looks like he used a dark tone. And I'm going to do a quick rough draft on this left okay. side. So I'm going to be using um, just some thin vine charcoal. And I have a wooden uh, skewer, bamboo skewer, that I pop the tip off just so I don't um, stab myself. And um, I've got a little tri-tip eraser, which is a good workhorse. I usually use this with pastel and things that I'm trying to get um, really clean on, trying to totally get erased. I have my image from Edward Pothaste, and I have pulled it up in preview, which is my photo viewer on a Mac. And there is an editing option. If you just uh, click on this little marker and then go over to the to the little mountain looking thing here that gives you your color adjustments and I like to totally remove all the color while I'm drawing just to get that out of the way and I can turn that editing part off that really just helps me look at the simple shapes and the values and I, want, I like to do a rough draft just to get myself familiar with the values for this painting. It is, there really are hardly any darks. The darkest darks are the top of her head and this front plane of her face and right here by her bow. And there's the next uh, hierarchy of darks is down here by her feet in a couple of little spots, but they're not really, they're really mid-tones. Her dress is the lightest plane and bow. Next would be the skin tone on the side of her face and her arm. Um, the background has um, middle tone dark. Could be just my screenshot. I'll have to look at that a little further. Middle tone dark, middle tone, middle tone light. Um, middle tone light and then it goes down and is a little bit darker down here at the bottom. So now I kind of have an idea of my values. Let's look at the shape and make a couple of observations real quick. I'm going to use her head as a standard. So she is and she's bent over so she's not standing up straight but I'm, I'm going to see how many heads tall she is. One, two, three to her hand or knuckles four just below her knee and a, uh, about a little less than five heads tall. So I can come over here and, let, and then also let's check. So a little less than five heads and let's see how she, wide she is at her widest point. So from the back of her dress to her wrist is a head and from her wrist is just a little less than two heads wide to, the, to her widest part of her dress. And that's typical. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place a mark where I think the head goes, where I want to place it, and then her feet down here at the bottom. And the feet are almost in the middle of the canvas. Her head over to one side, and I'll be checking that with plumb lines. But just for a rough draft now, I want to go ahead and, and figure out how big her head should be for my rough draft. So one, two, three, four, five. That's, so that's too small. One, two, three, four. Oh no, that's about right. Five. A little less than five with her feet. So I, I, I balled it right just the first time. Um, and you can usually do that. I like to um, to check it before I get started. It saves me a lot of time. Her head is very much almost a square box. I'm going to put it in as a circle to start with. And then this upper part of her body, and I might find her halfway mark as well. 
So I'm going to guess her halfway mark is the bend of her elbow. And that's almost right. So let's go down a little further, just below the bend of her elbow. No, nope, a little further. All right, so this area of her dress is the halfway mark. So I can come over here and check and just get, try to guess what the halfway mark is. A little bit lower. I want to go all the way down to here. About right here is a halfway mark. <clears throat> All right, so my rough draft, and I know that just below her, just right here at her shirt, is the halfway mark. Um, so I'll keep that in mind as I draw this triangular shape. And again, I'm, this is no, there is no, there are no details here. I really just want to see um, the sim the simplest version of this painting. And her head comes out just a bit further than her skirt. The back of her head comes right along the front of her arm. Back of her head. So that's about right. This angle of her hair overall is a bit downward and I look I already have it going upward so for the most part it's this way again hair check your plumb lines hair comes out just a bit further than her dress so I've overshot that a bit Just a bit further than her dress, still not coming out far enough. Let me check the height to width on her head. And almost to the back of her bow is about halfway through her bow is the width of it. All right, so her bow is there. jawline, face, and make sure you get that tilt right on that face, pretty, pretty far tilted, and remember that this angle goes this way. You can also use negative space right here, but don't, again, no details, we just want to mass in what we see, you can think about negative space here. A little bit of dark here. This is the halfway mark. Her arm is, is a, a bit more forward, so I have the elbow way back here. So I can check the plumb line, and her elbow is even with the back of her bow. So I can move that arm a bit forward. It goes down and then over. And then there's not that much space right here. There's a bit of a mid-tone here. A little bit of her arm. And the more you draw, the more the puzzle pieces fit together. So this whole section here is a, I'm going to just ignore that light spot in the middle of her front section and just interpret this right now as a mid-tone right there. There's a mid-tone here. And I want to make sure I don't get that too wide. And when I go up, when I draw it, I can adjust it. But right now I just am looking at simple shapes and values. The front of her leg her knee lines up with her chin, so that's about right. And then there's some simple shapes on her legs. So get yourself used to looking for simple shapes and values to start with. And then, uh, I will go ahead and indicate 
this dark on the front of her face. And this dark on the front of her bow. Okay, that's really, that's really all. Going back again, this is the mid-tone. Just, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just um, record that as one solid mid-tone. I'm not worried about the little pieces of light that might be in there, a reflected light. And this is my block in. So that's all, you, all you're concerned about right now. And this will help you get more familiar with the, the painting when you get ready to draw it. Oh, let's see. Let me go ahead and do a little bit of this bow. Simple shapes. This looks like a wadded up napkin. Okay, let me review for you since I didn't have the lower part on the camera. The, um, the complete figure is five heads tall. So you can go back and check yourself. One, two, the lower elbow, three to her wrist, four to almost the bottom of her dress, and five to her feet. Uh, you can check your plumb lines, the, um, the top of her head comes out just a bit further than her skirt, so I do need to adjust that. The front of her dress next to her elbow intersects the middle of her face, and her the back of her legs, where her knee is, comes up plumb with the back of her neck. Her Right here where her dress stops is the halfway mark. So that'll keep you from getting her, her torso too long or short and the lower part of her body too long or short. That's, that's going to be your checkpoint right there. This will help you in a lot of ways. Uh, it'll get you familiar with the figure. It'll break down these simple shapes into lights, mediums, and darks. Helps you find the halfway mark. How many heads tall? How many heads wide? And uh, when you get ready to draw it for the painting, you'll be uh, uh, much better informed. So she's a little less than two heads wide. Her head is the shape of uh, almost like a box with rounded corners. So when you're doing a figure, it's a good idea, or a portrait, it's a good idea to, to decide on um, head shape to start with, or face shape is a heart shape. Is it box shaped? Is it oval? Is it round? Um, because that'll help you get a lightness uh, before you even get any details on. Yep. So that's your, your quick lay in is to put a line at the top of the head and at the bottom of the feet. Figure out how many heads tall she is, how many heads wide, and then begin to slowly lay in the simple shapes. And look for areas of medium and dark. There are not many dark areas on her. So uh, that is simply all we're doing on this exercise is looking for simple shapes, values, and a quick rough draft to familiarize yourself with the painting. Uh, really there's only the white of the paper and the middle tone shadow on the front of her dress underneath her arm there, in front of her knees, down at her ankles. Making sure that you stay within the height and width of your proportions. Her head is predominantly a square with rounded edges. <clears throat> Check your plumb lines. She is um, from her neck, plumb all the way down, the front of her feet, the front of her neck, and just through the top of her wrist are all plumb. Front of her neck, top of her wrist, and front of her feet is all plumb. So those are things you can do to check before you begin your actual drawing. This there is no record of Pot Haste's palette. Um, the Impressionist probably did not use earth colors, so 
other than to tone his canvas. He had a raw sienna type color most of the time, it looks like, to tone his canvases with. I have toned mine with a blue because I see so much blue showing through on this particular painting. I am going to stick with the primaries, um, cad yellow, cad red medium, and ultramarine blue. I cleaned up my palette, so this is a mixture of my reds, and I'm really just looking for a red, primary red, a primary blue, and a primary yellow. So whatever you have, this one is a little bit dirty and leaning towards, um, well, it's a mid-tone yellow. It's got some greenish cast to it, probably because of the... Um, because I've dirtied it up a little bit. The main color that I see um, in working on this is the blue water for the background and the sky is, a, is a, it's not really sky, it looks like sand. So it's a sand color, which is a raw sienna color. And raw sienna is a mixture of yellow and purple, but the purple will lean toward the violet or red side. So you don't want too much blue in your purple. It's just easier for me and I think it's clear. Uh, it makes it more clear to go ahead and mix up a purple so that you can see you're mixing the complements to get this raw sienna color. So there's a violet. It's hard to tell when you first mix a purple. So sometimes if you mix a little tiny bit of white with it, you can tell the hue a little bit better. There. You can see that's definitely a reddish purple and just some of your cad yellow mixed in or some of your purple mixed in with your cad yellow. And that just makes kind of a mustard muddy color. If I hold that up, I can tell right off the bat that it needs more red in it. When you mix, um, yellow and purple. A lot of times if there's a lot of green in it, it will, I mean a lot of blue in it, it will go green. So to make a, a, a true or raw sienna color, you just need to add more red. So that's about what I see at the top. I hold my palette knife up and look, and then it gets lighter as it moves down. Instead of mixing white with it from the beginning, I'm going to mix yellow to get a a more pure color and then as it goes lighter and lighter and I'm going to mix a pretty good pile of this because we're only working on this two sessions and I don't want to remix paint I'd like to have enough from the get-go here if you're using a cad yellow medium you already have a lot of red in it so you see how it's getting brighter and brighter the more of this cad color I put in or yellow color I put in. So let me go ahead and mix a little bit more. All right, so I've mixed up uh, basically five values of this yellow, this raw sienna yellow, and I see some lavender in that sand color. So I've taken the rest of my purple up here and mixed some white in with that because it's a, it's a medium to light tone lavender. When I paint, I like to have at least two or three values of each color that I'm working with. Um, that keeps me, that keeps it more interesting, more um, dimensional, so that you're not tempted to just paint everything one color. And then we have, and I see that lavender in the water as well, so it probably wouldn't hurt to have a little bit more of that mixed up. The last color is the water color, and I'm just going to start with. Um, ultramarine blue and white. A lot of times when you just mix a pure color up, you have a real Easter egg color. And you see how quickly I do have that. Um, Pothase probably used a lot of vibrant colors like maybe Viridian and Emerald Green and Cobalt Violet. I, I think you're going to learn more if you stick with the primaries and you just mix from there. There's certain colors that are very difficult, like I can't mix Viridian, so I have to have Thalo. Those are uh, mineral type colors, <clears throat> and they're, they're just more challenging. I, I don't know how you mix them. So you do have to have certain tubes of paint to get certain colors. 
I see this around her dress. It's really, really bright. When you have blue like that and it's really too bright, I put a little bit of orange in with it just to dull it. That's the compliment. I had a little bit of red on my brush. I mean, on my uh, palette knife there anyway, so that kind of dulls it a little bit. And then one more value of this blue. Just mix some white with it. Pull it down this way. And that's mostly what we see in the water with these tones of lavender mixed in. So there you have it. Sand color. This is a little bit too um, bright, but I might put a few pops of that in there. Mostly going to be in this area with the sand and a little bit of this in the very top and around her feet. So that's the palette. And I am going to notice my tone is really, really dark. So I'm not accustomed to painting on this dark of a tone. Uh, with this little sketchbook, it helps if I put a little clip on it to keep my pages from, from popping out. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the rough draft. I'm going to make a place first by putting the top and the bottom and then the halfway mark. And double checking that to make sure my eye is right. Yep. And remembering that she's five heads tall. She's pretty close to the side, although this is a more narrow painting. It is not the same dimension as my sketchbook is. So I'm gonna guess one, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe could bump it up just a tad. Why is this important? Because, um, and I critiqued somebody this week that the head was, was really small and the body was the right size. So if you can decide how many heads tall and how many heads wide, I mean, it just saves you so much later on. So I'm going to say the back of her skirt is about there and she's a little less than two heads wide at her widest point, which is down below the halfway mark right here. This is her widest point from here to here. A little less than two heads. So that'll kind of keep me in check. I also know that, and I could go ahead and put a plumb line on this, her dress comes in just a bit from her head. So her head is going to be out here, which helps me a lot. Now, deciding that, um, go you know, checking the, the the width of the head and the width of the and the length of the figure shows me that I've got it a little too far forward. Now his is that way. His is more forward, and there's more room behind the figure. So you have to decide that. It almost feels like she's walking off the canvas. Do I want to leave it that way? Do I want to push it back a little bit? And at this point, I haven't drawn anything, so I could push it back just a bit. And I think I will. I don't like it so close to the to the edge. Let me double check it again. One and a little less than two. So it'll come over this way a bit. This is my halfway mark. Top of the head, bottom of the feet, halfway mark. One, two, three, four, five heads tall, one a little less than two heads wide. So that gives me a cocoon. And uh, again, I don't frustrate myself and have so many corrections to make. The shape of her head, and again, her head comes out just a bit farther. So that helps me know how far to go with this head. And it's more like a box. And remember when I checked height to width, it's about the same as uh, halfway into her bow. So her bow is going to be about right there. So again, just learning to do this, and I know it's monotonous and it drives, drives you crazy, but it really makes a huge difference. And um, you can get a drawing on here a lot faster. And you can learn to do these measurements really fast. We know her head is not a box. So I'll quickly, just to, to soothe myself, 
check your angles, pretend like, remember the hands of a clock, and try to uh, um, gauge your, your marks as if they were going to a certain time, 4 o'clock, 3.30 maybe on the top of that head. Then there's an angle here, there's an angle here, goes in just a bit, her chin goes up this way, her neck maybe there. I can come back in and check that. The top of her shirt comes right up through the middle from her chin. So we know her, her shirt doesn't need to come out any further than that. And it stops about right there. Not quite to the halfway mark. So see how much that already helps. It gives me a good idea of where I'm going. We're not doing a real detailed drawing here. Also, you can see that the waistline is at a strong slant. So it goes up to about 930. This flattens out. This is the widest place here, which is down below the halfway mark down here. Widest place. Her arm comes just up here. <clears throat> okay, I don't always do this, but it seems like a good idea with this figure. I uh, put a line, a halfway line. Uh, I marked half from head um, to feet, the halfway mark is right about here and the halfway mark widthwise is right here this was remember this is a little less than two two heads wide and five heads tall so i've pretty much put a cross down through there so that we could measure and check ourselves with this figure so how does that translate over here using the t-square i can draw a line smack down through the middle. I've already checked to find the middle between my less than two heads um, wide and then here is the halfway mark here. And that's a really good checkpoint for me as I'm working on this figure. I want it to be accurate and the way the pose is you can get her hunch backed or you can get her head too far forward, her feet too far one way or the other. So this will be a good checkpoint for me. You don't have to do this. It is a little bit like gridding, and I don't like to grid, but it does. it is supporting the plumb line method of checking your drawing. So it's easy to see this negative space here. It's easy to see how much space is right here in front. It's easy to see... You know, the back of her knee is close to this halfway line when you get down to this point, which will be down here. And I think it'll just go easier that way. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it now with all these things in place. You can use one or two or none of these things to draw. However you choose to get it on is your choice. But this works for me, and I'm always developing it and looking for different ways to check myself. See the negative space right here? There's a little diamond shape. Makes it easier to use negative space here. Again, the uh, vine charcoal is such a nice way to draw. And you don't have, it's not so hard to erase as if you were using graphite or even paint. Paint is, helps you um, transition to blocking a lot more readily. Um, but see, again, I wouldn't know where to place that. I believe I have this a little high. There we go. If this trips you up, don't worry about it. Again, just draw it. 
don't don't worry about all this but it's one way to do it and I'm just showing you new things um, hopefully if this is something you're not used to doing this will be helpful to you uh, see how close that is her And I'm pretty sure that this was the final, yep, that was the final head down here. So that's about right for where her dress should go. And it's wonderful when the puzzle pieces come together here. And you're still drawing, you're still using um, rhythm and your own perception of what you see. It's not like you're tracing something and getting very mechanical with it you are you're still using these short broken strokes there's a shadow under here her hand is just a pad which is one reason this is such a great study it really helps you um not over define what's in front of you but block it in keeping it very simple Okay, now there's a bit, I can see how this, the water is swirling around her feet. And the, I can also see another good thing that dividing the figure in half did was it showed me exactly where the shoreline is on this side and on this side. There's a bit of a wave or something here and there's some purple here don't think i have this drawn accurately her neck is too long so you can come back in here when i start defining her face and i will go ahead and define a bit of her face so that i can be sure that i don't have her head too big for her body. Her features, you could go ahead and check that before you start trying to lay your eyes in. Typically on an adult, the eyes are halfway down. So on a child, they're usually further down on the head. The features are usually down in the almost the lower third. So that'll be important if you get the eyes too high up on her head. From the highest place on her head, the halfway mark is right where her eyebrows would go. So if you want to find the halfway mark here on your head, double check that. Let's see if there's a bit of a height here. So we're going to say here to here. Here to here so her brow line would be here which means her eyes would come down further a bit further and that will immediately make her look younger so I'm going to just caution you not to get um, not to put those eyes too high up on the head key very key for children Her bow, there's really, I've got too much space here between her bow. So if I check her bow, it's actually even with her eyes. So it comes down a bit farther than I have it. There we go. And her shoulder is maybe here, her sleeve. And see how much, you can use the neck as negative space and see that it, it overlaps the halfway mark just a bit. So that's all I'm going to do drawing and I'll start laying in some of the background. If you've drawn in a real heavy fashion, that was eight minutes. If you've drawn in a real heavy fashion, you might just take a cloth, a clean cloth, and knock, knock down some of that drawing, especially in the white areas that you don't want to get uh, that charcoal mixed in. The charcoal melts pretty well. It's pretty organic, but you could just knock it down a little like this. 
just so that you have a kind of a shadow there of where you're going. I am just using a flat, this is a number three, I think, flat. Uh, it's not a bristle. You could use a bristle, but this is a synthetic. I don't know what brand it is. It's just something I grabbed. Uh, use as large a brush as you can so that you're not working yourself to death for this. And you might find one. I may switch to something a little bit bigger. But for oil paint, you definitely want to have something that's uh, aggressive and that you can scoop your paint up like a spoon and lay it on fairly heavily. Um, now, I'm not using any medium yet, so I'm really going to have to load my brush up in order to paint the way that he's painted. This is a very, in fact, I, I can already tell from the get-go that I have not mixed enough paint. So you have two options here. You can use a little bit of medium to get your paint to flow better. You could even use a palette knife if you want to, to um, get this covered. Now I may go ahead and just paint it on thinly and come back and add some brushwork on the top of it just to get it covered. I do paint in an overlapping method. So I'm kind of coming in over her head just a bit. I don't want to do that too much because he's used, he's, I see the blue showing through. And again, I don't know if that's tone or if he's underpainted with a heavier blue on there. But you can go ahead and um, however you feel comfortable with this and get it, get it laid on. It's really dark at the top, the darkest part of the sand. And then I see some lavender in there and I'm moving down my palette to the lighter yellow not too quickly you can see how much brighter that is so I want to have some some what of a transition here and the mine's pretty yellow so if your color is too Easter egg and you feel like it's just too bright for what you're seeing in front of you you can mix a tiny speck of the complement into it to go case it. as I'm I'm going to add some lavender anyway that will help to dull it down and everything looks really light and bright next to this dark tone or on top of this dark tone so But I really, the lavender is really pretty in there. And since it is the complement of yellow, it goes so nicely. You know, when you get ready to paint sand and you just mix up a creamy color, you really miss an opportunity to put interesting accents in. <coughs> so I still have the purple on my brush as I'm... Uh, coming back into this yellow. Uh, I do want to make it a little brighter near her face. I'm kind of side brushing, which I can hear my one of my teachers say not to do that, to side brush. Um, but use the whole full uh, length, width of your brush to get to get some good mileage in here. Pretty bright right there. Not that bright. That's really bright. Goodness. And that's because it's got so much cad yellow in it. And the white kind of helps tone that down. So have fun with this part because and you can come back over and uh, drag some color back over it. I'm going to soften the area around the periphery of her head. I don't want any, um, although he's got ridges on here. And I, you know, I suspect that this was done a la prima because it's just, it's not taking long. We're able to get this on here pretty fast. So I'm, I'm assuming he just was at the beach and did this a la prima. He spent a lot of time at the beach. <clears throat> there is, um, there are areas with yellow down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in because I have it on my brush.
there is yellow around her on her dress we'll put a little purple with it so it's not so bright under her arm there's a lot of purple in this area right it's a kind of an orangish purple there right under her knee Go ahead and put that in even though we're not doing the figure right now but that just reminds me to put that tone in later you want to have some um, rhythm and flu fluidity really if you choose to go ahead and do this in one session and I may go ahead and work on it um, and just see I'm dividing it into two sessions so that, because that's kind of how I planned, but if if you've been painting very long, you know that things definitely um, are flexible and can be adjusted. And when you get on a roll and you're just really feeling, feeling it, it's probably not a good idea to stop. So... We will paint something else next week if we get this whole thing painted today. I'm going to go ahead and put some of that yellow in her hair. A bit more under here. A bit more over here. Brighten that up in front of her just a bit. And I think it would be a lot more fun to do this uh, as an a la prima session. There's a warmer area up here and I think it's good to look for mixing up more purple because I've already used everything I mixed in my purple pile but I see some notes of purple up here that are really nice the thing about doing a study of another artist is you you really get your magnifying glass out as you're painting and you see color nuances that that you might not have noticed if you were sitting out there painting it, it really helps you train your eye to see what the other artists saw and see i'm already i'm already on the get-go here with the top of her head so i think i'll wait i think i'll i'll, I'll go back to my original plan and go ahead and get this water on <clears throat> and then reassess from there what I want to do next. So I'm going to start out with the middle tone blue palette. I'm going to start right here with the middle tone on my blue to lay this water in, and then I'm going to choose. And when I lay that, it's going to it's middle tone, but it looks really light on here. I'm going to lose my halfway mark here which is okay that's the thing about learning to draw learning to draw better and you don't worry when you lose your drawing because you know you can get it back it wasn't just a fluke that you got got it right once and you'll never do it again I mixed into my lighter pile and I want to stay this has a lot of purple in it too so Whoops. Go ahead and, and you can see his brush marks here. You can see where he just scumbled this over the top of it looks like a blue background. Uh, the whole thing of painting impressionistically and painting um, in this painterly method is you have to load your brush up. You use a palette knife. Use whatever you need to use to get this paint on here. And when you do water, I see evidence of his strokes going up and down and around her legs. But I try as much as possible to keep my strokes flat. And he, you can see yellow mixed all in here. So maybe he even just did that. My purple and uh, blue and purple are together up here on my palette. So it's easy for me to dip into both of those. And 
And if it's if the paint is feeling too thick for you and it's not moving around, you can mix a little medium in with it. I'm using my mixture of Gamblin products, Gamvar, Gamsol, and walnut oil. The walnut oil I use is by M. Graham. Doesn't matter whatever you like to use as a medium. If you like liquid, whatever you like, use that. Remember, this is water, so you might go ahead and wiggle it in is, is the only way I can think to describe how I get color on here sometimes is to wiggle it in. But, you you know, think water. Think uh, waves and puddles and just try to... get the feeling of it on there. It gets darker down here um, with a purplish, almost a, a violet blue down here on the bottom. And again, that may be the shadow on my screen because this was a screenshot off of a high resolution video of his work. I do like some of that blue showing that I see around the perimeter of her skirt. So I'm going to try to retain some of that. And I may go back in. Actually, I may go back in now with a clean brush and pull some of that off so that it will show. <coughs> You know, when somebody paints something in this fashion, a la, a la prima, all at once, it's hard to do that yourself. I mean, to make it, you're not going to make it look just like his. Uh, because so much of it's just rhythm and quick impressions of what he saw in front of him. Our um, goal today is to, is to try to see what colors he saw, how his brush stroke was laid on. His brush strokes, I should say. Um, I like this here, and I've scumbled that more. And I could go back in with my brighter blue and drag some of that over the top because I do have that the three values mixed in with my blue. Um, this You can see I've really gobbed it onto my paintbrush. And that's what you want to do here. I'm barely holding the brush with a really light touch. Keeping, again, the water all very horizontally applied. Now it's already started to get kind of sticky on my canvas, or my paper, You should, I should say. I can tell by touching it, the paint's pretty sticky. The titanium white I'm using is uh, a tube without a cap, and so it's not a real creamy white. It's pretty thick and opaque, and I like it that way. I didn't leave the top off on purpose. It broke, but I just haven't worried too much with putting another top on it. The sand could have some up and down strokes. It doesn't have to be all horizontal. <clears throat> I like to vignette my paintings too, so spend a little bit of time thinking about this. Do you want to finish it all the way out to the edge? Do you want to just have a little bit of a vignette of that unfinished feel? Get back from it. I keep, every time I lean forward, I lean back to look at it from a distance. I really like this purple color and this brightness right here, and I've lost that. So I'm going to get a palette knife <clears throat> and I'm going to mix, I'm going to mix up a little bit more color here um, so that I can lay it on a little bit thicker. And I'm going to remind you guys in class to mix pretty good piles of paint so that you do not have to stop and do what I'm doing right now because I'm so thrifty that I do this often. I have to stop and it breaks your flow. I'm 
So I want a more uh, lavender color, but I don't want, I just put so much white in it there that I lost a lot of the that beautiful color I see. All right, so I'm going to drag, I'm going to come back up here and drag some of that back over. Too dark. Let me mix some more white with it. Um, the, the beauty of Pot Haste's paintings is the light that he's captured on the beach. And we know he was out there, and I don't know how he got children to pose for him like this. Not sure that he did, but put a little bit more red with that lavender just to warm it up a bit. There we go. I like that a little better. Some of it up here. There's a bit of it here. I see some down here in the water. And, you know, the lavender can kind of be a bit of a mother color, kind of tie everything together. I see a much darker version of it up here in the corner with more red in it. Might just dip a little bit of that up there. Even more red. here. And now I'm using a small palette knife because it's easier for me to control. Use whatever size palette knife you have. But that just helps you, especially once you get all your paint wet, it just helps you to lay wet on top of wet without mushing it in and losing all your beautiful. Let's see, that's too dark. Let me go back to my light pile. And you can do this as many times as you need to. If you want to wipe it all off with a rag and start over, you can. So, now, how do we keep from losing all this beautiful texture? But it may feel a little out of control to you. Sand does have texture like this too, too so you don't want to totally remove it all. I want to soften a little bit of that down. I'm going to use a one of these little mop brushes just to mop it in just a little a couple places. But I want to retain the feeling that this is sand and this is water. There's really not a hard edge here. There's a bit of a harder edge down here. So let me mix up a little bit more of my lighter blue. <clears throat> and I'm going to use a palette knife to lay that on. I put a tiny bit of purple in that. Especially down here around this little wavy thing. Keep your palette knife horizontal. <clears throat> down here around her feet. And a little bit more purple going here. And <clears throat> let me show you what I'm doing with my palette knife. <clears throat> when you mix up the color you want, <clears throat> you want to load the ed edge of it up because you're using the bottom of your palette knife. So if you feel like you're getting too much texture going, it's easy to come back in here and soften some of that down. It's a bit lighter up here than I have it. Not that light. Goodness. Make sure you get the right value when you're doing this. We don't want to have a bunch of waves or ripples up here, but I do like to have it light enough to feature her dress, and her dress is going to be a lot lighter than that. 
So let's see. I'm pretty sure he used a palette knife here. I don't want to get too light down here. There's a little ripple right around the edge of her feet. It's kind of yellowish. Go ahead and put that in. <clears throat> you can play with that some more as we get to that point. All right, <clears throat> this is really bothering me now, so I may have to take that off. I don't like that on there. And you can even further, I'm going to use a small, medium size sable with a little mineral spirits on it and just lift that off. I can get it completely off there, but I'm not too worried about it. But I wanted you to see that, you know, if you put something on and you don't like it, just take it off. Everything is figure outable and everything is fixable. So don't forget. Don't be intimidated. So on some of this, I want to tone it down just a bit. I'm using this little softening brush. I may use my finger just so it's not so choppy looking, especially up here around her. The only thing to take away, coming in over the dress, I don't want, that's just a habit I have. Now he, you can see where he just painted around her and, and that's fine if you want to do that as well. <coughs> Be careful at this stage that you don't just take out all that nice texture and get back from it and look at it across the room. Do leave some areas for rest and even use your finger if you want. I see some pools down here too. And I just dip my finger right in my palette. If you're concerned about toxicity issues, then don't do it. But I just leaned into a big pile of ultramarine blue a while ago and I totally had to go in the bathroom and take almost a bath in hand cleaner to get it off. All right. So I'm not thrilled with how this looks right now, but I'm just reminding myself that this is not the focal point. It's the background and it's the middle stage. So I'm going to stop here and we will do the figure next week. Uh, let me do check a couple more things. I want to make sure. Let me see. I should get away from it and do another quick recap. But I want to make sure that I have this covered properly under her chin. It's really yellow. I may adjust this yellow when I get the rest of the paint on next week and decide that it's too yellow. <clears throat> 